Thank you very much and good afternoon. I'd like to talk to you about what I think are the challenges in the pre-hospital management of sick kids. These are pretty challenging times, both mentally and emotionally. The mental side of things may be uh, related to the unfamiliarity, if you usually look after adults. But sometimes it's about the parallels with your own children, and this can be very difficult to shake off when you're on scene, to be honest. Some of you are thinking, oh, yeah, I don't need to know this. I can escape from that, but because um, I just do adult practice. But of course, put yourself in the situation when you're about to do a resuscitative hysterotomy on a pregnant woman who's in cardiac arrest. At the end of that, you'll be left with two critically ill patients. One of them may be as small as 500 grams. The disease processes you find in children aren't particularly different. There's cardiac arrests, burns, trauma, sepsis. So you'll be used to this. Now, some of you are thinking, you know, paediatricians, blah, blah, it's all a bit warm and fuzzy. Um, well, for some of you, <laughs> some of you, it's sheer terror. Now, actually, for those of you who like all the warm and fuzzy stuff, um, I've got a little video now of, um, of a case you're about to be dis dispatched on. Now it sounds dangerous. Then when I see her face, she takes me away to that special place. And if I stay too long, I'd probably break down and cry. Oh, sweet child. Okay, you're now about to be dispatched to that job. What's going through your mind? Well, I suspect for most of you, absolute sheer terror. Oh, my word, what am I going to do? But for many of you, you'll have the other action, which is actually just to freeze. You just don't know what to do next. In fact, you can't think now because you've just seen that video. So I want to guide you through what I think you might be able to do, prepare yourself for before, during, and after you come across a scene like that. Now, you won't be surprised to find that I suggest that simulation might be a really good way. So simulation is a pretty good way of working out what your knowledge gaps are, uh, the type of equipment you carry. Maybe you don't carry the right stuff, your guidelines within your unit, and sometimes, actually, your coping strategies. These are things you only really find out when you do simulation rather than by the books. Now, um, I quite like simulations, and I quite like taking my work home. So uh, this is a little video I did at home, home video. It's the kids, <clears throat> teaching them simulation. And I think videoing a simulation is pretty important, actually. Um, you know, he hasn't got very good bagging technique. I'll remind him about that later. Um, <laughs> poor, poor team communication, CRM, bad. Look at these chest compressions. And there's a sign of futility as they realize <laughs> this just isn't going to work. So um, a, lot, a lot to debrief with those afterwards. So. Um, on a more serious note, you know, when you do your simulation, look at this equipment you need. These, these ranges of equipment go from 500 grams up to 150 kilos. You only really find out about what's missing in your airway tray, your breathing tray, your circulation tray, once you've actually done this. And monitoring as well. If you don't have the right size saturation probe, you won't find anything. Um, one of the things I've put on there is actually a nasogastric tube. I mean, I don't use nasogastric tubes in adult cardiac arrests, but I tell you what, they are pretty useful in a pediatric arrest where the patient has got really distended abdomen and that's affecting the lungs during your, uh, your CPR. I can never, I mean, I'm a pediatrician, I can't remember these things. Calculations for weights and what drugs do I give and what size equipment, how deep you put it in. I mean, I can't remember that stuff uh, when I'm not stretched, you know, stressed, let alone when I am. So use these uh, aid memoirs. There's several paper versions of page per age and lots of electronic and app versions that are coming on the scene all the time. So have these at your disposal. One of the biggest cognitive aids you could use is actually just treat children like you would your adult patients. So let's take it for granted, you guys are at the top of your game when it comes to your adult critical care. I'm just asking you to do the same when it comes to children. Okay, you know, if you know the differences, that's fantastic, but you know, I don't think any of us should be treating these children any differently to our adults. Now, undoubtedly, this is gonna be a high pressure stake. And let's make it clear, pressure never makes your performance better is always going to degrade your performance. And you need to know um, at what point pressure kicks in. 
it may make really simple tasks pretty difficult to, to, to undertake. So just know where your pressure limit is. Take control of yourself. You know, we are, you are going to get cognitive and autonomic overload. Your brain's going to be bursting with stuff, and, um, uh, and your hands are going to be shaking, and your legs have turned to jelly. So you won't even be able to do simple, complex tasks, let alone the advanced clinical decision-making you're meant to be there. So it's all very well understanding about because you could listen to loads of talks on cognitive and autonomic overload. But actually recognizing it in yourself, in your team, and knowing how to deal with it is important. So training as part of that, find your own level. Uh, you know, and you've seen this morning, the, the ATAC course is a really, really good way of learning where your level is. And in simple terms, it prevents you crapping yourself when it really matters. So you, how do you get over that pressure situation? Well, you might think this is a, really a silly thing to say, that I think you should start by doing a primary survey. But you will be surprised how many people just miss that out. They're so scared about the fact as a child, part of your safety issues, hand over. Just start with a simple primary survey. It's the sort of thing that's hardwired into you. You guys should be able to do that like that. Take control of a child in, uh, in severe pain and distress by using early intranasal fentanyl and ketamine before you even try and put in a cannula or use any other access. It'll just buy a bit of control of the situation. Now, clearly, you obviously need to carry the right um, strengths of ketamine and fentanyl and have an atomizer, but that's what I would recommend. I can't emphasize the importance of CRM in this. All these elements of CRM are relevant to, uh, to the care of a child. Anticipate and planning. That's um, doing a special wet flag calculations before we arrive on scene. Having aid memoirs. These are all important parts of CRM. So um, one of the things I find frustrating about the care of children, um, swoop and scoop, and I see it happen all the time. It even happens to me, up the back of the heli or the ambulance, and someone comes up and says, take it now, take it now, we're ready to go. Um, well, I think that's wrong. Too many children are moved without having... Um, uh, adequate airway. So I would recommend get control of hemorrhage, get control of the airway and breathing, then you can move to the right place. These are pretty emotional times, and none of us are protected from this. And I couldn't predict any of you who would get this. But just think about hot debriefs in individuals and in your teams. It's very, very important. Have a system in place. You can be haunted by these cases for months on end afterwards. We've spoken about PTSD already, but I think it's very, very important that you recognise the danger of PTSD and that you have a system in place to repair you. In the UK, we commonly use TRIM. So I hope I've impressed upon you enough that um, uh, you need to prepare yourself the next time you see a critically ill child and go away and think about your own teams and departments and how you might be able to prepare for that. Thank you very much. <laughs>